In this video, we will discuss about solar thermal energy conversion. We'll see details of evacuated tube collector, evacuated tube with heat pipe and flat plate collector. We'll talk about the concept of greenhouse effect as it relates to solar thermal collectors. Also a comparison of the evacuated tube collector with the flat plate collector will be done. Let's start. Solar radiation can be used to generate thermal energy with the help of a solar thermal collector. This thermal energy can then be used to heat fluids that is gas or liquid. In this conceptual diagram of a solar water heater, cold water enters the solar thermal collector from the lower side, gets heated in the collector and hot water leaves from the top side. The electrical energy can also be directly generated using photons or light from solar energy using solar photovoltaic panel. This approach is more popular application of solar energy. However, there is a big difference between solar thermal collectors and solar photovoltaic panels. The solar thermal collector for water heaters mainly consists of evacuated tubes made of glass or flat plate collector which is made of metal. These collector converts solar energy to heat and transfer it to water. Whereas a photovoltaic panel which is made up of semiconductor material converts solar energy to electrical energy in the form of direct current. Today we are not going to discuss solar photovoltaics. So let's remove this. Solar thermal collectors form the heart of solar water heaters. Let's first focus on flat plate solar thermal collectors. These are fluid pipes and this is an absorber plate. Both are generally made of metal. The metal can be aluminium, copper or iron. A selective coating of black color is done on the absorber plate so that it can absorb maximum solar radiation and emit a very little radiation. The water flows inside these pipes. The glass screen is provided here which allows solar radiation from the sun to pass through but does not allow the heat radiation from the absorber to escape. The screen is known as glazing and is usually consist of glass but can also be made of transparent plastic. The word glaze is derived from the word glass. There is a thermal insulation behind the absorber plate to prevent conduction losses. Also the collector is sealed properly to prevent any convection losses. The fluid pipes and absorber plate are collectively called pipe and fin arrangement. You can also see fins which are present in motorcycle engines here. These are used to dissipate heat and keep the engine cool by providing a large surface area whereas fins in the flat plate collectors collect heat from the sun because of the large surface area and transfer it to pipes. Let's see the working of a flat plate collector. It will be easy to understand the working if we remove this transparent screen. The collector without the screen is called unglazed flat plate solar collector. This type of collector is generally used for swimming pools where hot water temperature requirement is not high. When the short wave solar radiation falls on the absorber plate, some of the radiation will be reflected and some of it will be absorbed. This will raise the temperature of fins and the pipes. We know all objects with the temperature above absolute zero emit thermal radiation. As the temperature rises, the absorber plate and the pipes will emit more and more long wave radiation. What is meant by short wave here? The maximum energy of the sun emitted is around 500 nanometer wavelength and is called short wave radiation. So what is long wave? 
For the Earth's temperature, maximum energy is emitted around 10,000 nanometer wavelength and is called long wave radiation. We can understand this clearly if we plot the sun's spectrum by plotting the radiation intensity on y-axis and wavelength on the x-axis. The maximum energy of the sun is emitted around wavelength of 0.5 micrometer or 500 nanometer whereas the maximum energy for the emitted radiation for Earth's spectra is around 10 micrometer or 10,000 nanometers wavelength. Let's keep the glazing now and we call this glazed flat plate solar collector. When the sun's radiation fall on the glass, only very little amount of it is reflected and absorbed by the glass. Rest of it is transmitted to the absorber. The temperature of the absorber start rising. The long wave radiation that are emitted are reflected back from the glass and trapped inside the collector and continue to heat the absorber. This is because glass is transparent to short wave radiation but opaque to long wave radiation. This phenomenon is similar to the greenhouse effect in which gases in the atmosphere such as carbon dioxide trap heat similar to the glass roof of a greenhouse. Let's now focus on evacuated tube collector. You can see part of evacuated tube collector. This consists of two glass tubes. This one is an inner glass tube. You can see it more clearly in this broken evacuated tube. This is an outer glass tube. It is prominently visible in evacuated tube. The inner side of inner glass tube is coated with copper to transfer heat to water. The outer side of inner glass tube is coated with special absorber paint so that it can absorb maximum solar radiation and emit very little radiation. In between these two glass tubes, a vacuum is present. That is why it is known as evacuated tube collector. The lower end of both the tubes are sealed after creating a vacuum. In this picture, you can see the lower end of both the tubes, which is broken. The phenomena of the greenhouse effect also apply to evacuated tube collector. As we know, conduction and convection require medium, whereas radiation can travel through a vacuum. So the conduction losses are much lower in evacuated tubes because of the vacuum and convection loss is almost nil. Let's compare efficiency of both the collectors. The efficiency of both types of collector varies with the temperature difference between the entering water temperature and ambient temperature. If the temperature difference is less, that means the hot environment. If the temperature difference is high, that means the cold environment. So let's take the temperature difference on the x-axis and efficiency on the y-axis and plot the graph. In a hot environment, that means when the temperature difference is less, the flat plate performs better. In cold environment, when the temperature difference is high, the evacuative collector performs better. The most popular collector nowadays is evacuated tube collector which costs less and is easy to maintain. A special type of evacuated tube collector with heat pipe is also available which we can see here. This is a copper heat pipe. There are fins inside the evacuated tube and this one is the cap that seals the evacuated tube from the top. If you take the heat pipe from the evacuated tube, you will find it, it is sealed from top and bottom. It carries a special fluid that has a very low boiling point and can easily be converted to vapors. These hot vapors can then be used for heating water. Multiple evacuated tubes are connected in a manifold for indirect heating of water. 
evacuate tube collector with heat pipes has certain advantages the problem of scaling is eliminated in evacuate tube with heat pipe when we talk about the working of solar water heaters in a future video we'll be able to know more about solar thermal collectors today we have seen details of the evacuated tube and the flat plate collector we also got to know that the evacuated tube collector is more efficient in cold environments thank you very much keep plugging